Hey, sports fans, Coach Nick here, and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I have Pat Zipfel, an NBA advanced scout, with me to talk a little bit about what that means to look at game film and scout other teams. Zip, let's just talk first of all about what the travel schedule is like for someone like you. Well, for 13 years as the advanced scout in the NBA, you travel approximately 150 to 175 nights a year are on the road in a hotel and you in person probably watch 135 to 150 NBA games in person. So it's a lifestyle really. Wow. Um, and what do you think you get from being at the game that you can't get from watching the video later? Well, we're really fortunate in the NBA. We watch the game in the front row, and we're able to not only hear what the coach says, but what the players say, and then we're able to actually label it, and then our team knows the opponent's play call, and that how happens at the point of the play during our game. We can negate the first action. Wow. So uh, you, they allow you as a visiting member of another team to get close enough to the bench? Well, uh, every NBA si uh, team has seating for the next advanced scout. So depending upon what city you're in, uh, the seating is, uh, can be great. It can be just average. Uh, but overall, they typically they're outstanding seats. Now talk about the nomenclature and how you are able to master the different terms of plays. Well, each coach's nomenclature or language is his terms of each plays. And so we study them over the course of the year. You watch a team 18 to 20 times. You try to learn on tape or in person. Uh, you try to learn what it is they're doing and try to figure out their language and then able to apply it to our video and then also have our players know their plays. Now, do you ever have a, a say in how to combat a certain play when you see it? Uh, being an advanced scout is a pretty great job because what it does is allows you to not only identify what the opponent's doing, but it helps you solve what they're doing in conjunction with your coaching staff. So uh, you're really a coach with a laptop. You know, we talk a lot about ice defense. And um, my question is people are always concerned about, well, what if it's like Dirk Nowitzki or Kevin Love who's doing the, setting that screen? Uh, I'm curious, what's your take on that? How would you be able to use ice on those kind of players? Well, it's hard. Uh, every every uh, player um, has a strength and a weakness. So um, you know, knowing those guys are out there and capable shooters, it makes it difficult to game plan on each night. Um, I think you really have to look at who's guarding them uh, and, and, and think of the best way to not have them score. Uh, it depends on your personnel and what their, their ability to defend is. So you might actually have to rotate a third person over and, and something like that to come at that shot. If, if we ice or blue, uh, yes, the weak side would have to come rotating over because uh, that would defensively uh, not give them a free path to the basket. Terrific. Well, can you just tell us really briefly, uh, you mentioned in, in the, in the uh, seminar uh, the top five sets that you see teams run, or, or there's a mo most common. Uh, let, let them know. I think uh, our viewers are going to recognize quite a few of the things you're going to say, but tell me, what do you see most often? Uh, I think every NBA team uses a version of what is called floppy, which is a term that uh, mostly was used by Pat Riley uh, when he coached. Uh, that is what it could be determined as called single double action, where the two bigs are at the blocks and the guards cross underneath. Uh, I think every team uh, also uses what is called horns action, which is a pick on the ball in the elbow area. Um, I think those two actions are pretty standard in the league, but uh, the NBA is not easy to just clearly identify. Every coach has some, uh, their own system, and some of them are really sophisticated. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You in? You in? I'm in.